you are what you eat, or so they say. <laughs> David, your headline referring to the companies Apple has gobbled up this past year. It's uh, certainly piquing some interest with that uh, cool headline there. We're going to start with the why. Apple, you know, it's a big enough company to solve, uh, it would seem, all of its problems internally. So why would they even need to turn to acquisitions? Well, there's a, a variety of reasons why, why companies acquire other companies. Um, one of the biggest is, is to be able to bring talent in that might be otherwise connected to a company that they don't want to leave. But also, after a while, a company begins to, to sort of have a, a personality that if they want to break out of and they want to change their, their perspective, bringing in sort of fresh perspectives from other businesses is often a, a good way to shake that up. It's also a good way to bring in technology that's been developed or tested or proven without having to go through the entire product life cycle. So if there's something out there and they can afford to acquire it and they can, they can match the, the corporate cultures to bring it in, it often makes a, a lot of good sense and can cut months or years off the development life cycle. All right, and you know, David, you, uh, you know, given the size of Apple, you found their rate of acquisitions, uh, you know, to be relatively low. So how do you think that compares to say a Google or Microsoft? Well, if you look at, at when the companies were formed and you look at the number of acquisitions per year, Apple's relatively low. A Apple was formed back in the late seventies and has been acquiring since that time about two and a half companies a year. By contrast, Microsoft, which was formed at about the same time, has been acquiring roughly five companies a year, which is also relatively small given the size of the company. And then Google, which was formed in the late 90s, has been acquiring 10 or 11 companies a year. Now, obviously as a company gets bigger, it has a bigger war chest and so it can acquire more companies. So in, in this case, the, the, the piece that I, I wrote, Apple has acquired roughly 10 companies that we know of in the last 12 months. And, and David, do you think, you know, outside of, uh, say, the finance world, why would anyone really care or, or have concern with the companies uh, specifically that Apple is, is acquiring? Well, whenever you start working with very large companies like an Apple or a Microsoft or a Google, a lot of other businesses are dependent on their strategy. And so those companies don't necessarily announce ahead of time what they're doing, but we still need to kind of get a, a forward look into, into what they're producing, where they're going, and acquisitions often tell us the story of where they're paying attention or where they think they need to shore up weaknesses. And that, that gives us at least a clue into looking at what the, the company might be, be doing over time and, and maybe a, a, a forward thinking look into what they might be developing in the future. And you mentioned, uh, David, you know, over the course of the past uh, 12 months here that Apple has acquired uh, 10 companies. Can you expand on those a little bit? Yeah, let's let's do that sort of as a lightning round. I got to do this off a list because otherwise I would never uh, I would never remember them all. But uh, let's see if we can we can fire through them pretty quick. Texture was a digital magazine publishing platform. Uh, this directly became the Apple News Plus offering. Aconia Holographics is a maker of AR displays, and and that one's kind of interesting because you start to say, oh, well, there's a maker of AR displays. Might there be augmented reality products in Apple's future beyond the iPad? We don't know, but they're certainly buying a company that makes those. Uh, Dialog Semiconductor has been making Apple power management chips since the beginning of the first iPhone. The probability on that is to gain more control over their power management. Asai is an automated A&R, which is an acquisitions and repertoire platform, or basically talent management. Silk Labs, which has been developing on-device AI computational capability. Platoon, which is a second talent management and acquisition company. Data Tiger, which is an AI marketing, big data, and real-time data provider. Polestring, whose technology has been used to power conversational interfaces with like Alexa and Google Assistant. You, you might see that moving into, into Siri. Laserlike, which provided what they call a web-scale content search discovery and personalization platform. Again, something that might help Siri. And then Stamplay, a company that won a contest to use uh, to basically make the best use of, of Visa API. So they're doing something with payments and, and connecting to credit cards, which makes sense in, in given that Apple's latest offering of both the Apple Card and Apple Pay are, are pretty high on their priorities. So there's your lightning round. Yeah, I like it. All right. Yeah, that, definitely need to read those. That would be a lot to remember there. Well, you know, with all of that to be said, uh, uh, David, where do you think, or uh, what do you think that says about where Apple is focusing its attention here going forward? 
Well, clearly we're not seeing, you know, with the exception of, of Dialogue, which is, is providing power management uh, chips that Apple's been buying from them since 2007, we're not seeing Apple acquiring companies that would go to its hardcore traditional product line. It's, it's not, you know, they're, they're, they're not getting pieces for operating systems or applications or that kind of stuff. What they're getting is stuff for their supply chain. They're getting a lot of AI and machine learning and, and voice things, which means they're probably trying to augment Siri in some way. Uh, they've got this AI purchase they've got, and they've got, they, they've picked up a couple of, of A&R and talent management companies, which goes to their recent announcements for a lot of the content they're moving into, whether it's the sort of their, their Netflix comp competitor or their Apple Music or the News Plus service. In, in all of these cases, Apple is becoming a distributor of media. And you're seeing multiple acquisitions where Apple is bringing in talent acquisition. So clearly they're looking for the content that would go into the distribution of that media. So that's, that's all very interesting. It kind of says where Apple sees both its weaknesses and where it sees it's moving forward to. But all of this is a bit of a crapshoot because, you know, we can't read their minds from here, although certainly I get paid to try. <laughs> yeah, we can certainly do that. You know, there's always something uh, to talk about, David, when it comes to Apple. Uh, so thank you for that. And for David's full article and the list of the companies uh, that he was referring to, the 10 that Apple has gobbled up this past year, make sure you check out ZDNet.